For this video, we're going to look at how we can use an idea called ASCII to encode and decode different characters to and from our keyboard into a binary form. So the way we think of it, computers basically represent all forms of data as binary. Now there are in fact other ways to represent data, but the main ways that you and I would be familiar with, the computers that we use on a daily basis, represent all their information in the binary format. For this to happen, we actually need to create a way to represent this data, these real world objects, as binary data. We do this by creating a schema, or in other words, a description that explains how to encode various attributes and values that can be represented as binary data. That will hopefully become clearer as we go through this. So, one common schema that represents text and other keyboard characters is called ASCII which is a shortcut for the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Basically, it's a fancy way of saying a table that represents all the different characters and gives them a value that we can use. And again, there are lots of other different formats. Um, ASCII, in fact, is sort of being replaced at the moment uh, by a new format called Unicode, which takes into account more characters and more international uh, languages but ASCII is still quite commonly used today, and in fact Unicode is based on ASCII for backwards compatibility. So each character on the keyboard is assigned a number, which in turn can be then represented as one byte of binary. Now the term byte is a new term, so let's quickly have a look at that. So if we have eight bits of data, we call that a byte. So here is some binary, and there are eight bits of data, each one or zero is a bit, and when we have those eight bits together, we call that a byte. And a byte is a very important term that you'll need to know going forward. When we represent a byte, we must include any leading zeros. So usually when we talk about numbers, certainly in decimal, we don't like zeros at the front of a number, they're not really needed, but if we're talking about a byte, we absolutely have to include any leading zeros because if we take those away, it will actually change the place value of everything and that would completely corrupt our binary. So a byte must contain eight bits and if that means leading zeros, then we have to include those. We also often show a space between the first four bits and the last four and this is really just to help make it a bit easier to read. So let's look at how we encode or turn our character basically into binary. So encoding is going from the original into the binary. Let's start with a subset of the ASCII table. The ASCII table has a lot more characters than this. We're just using a simplified version that has mainly the um, upper and lower case letters that we need. Um, please note down the bottom that unfortunately a couple of letters did get missed on the table. Uh, it won't affect what we're doing, but they do of course exist. They just accidentally got deleted in this process. So, if we look at the table, every character is there. So there is the letter A. It has a decimal value, or we'll call that its ASCII value, of 65. And of course, there is the binary for 65 as well. So you could double check that if you like. So we can see that every letter is listed. They each have a corresponding number and they each therefore have a corresponding binary value. So let's say we had the word hello. It has a capital H and then four lowercase letters. Let's start by creating a table. So here we have the letters H, capital, and the lowercase e, l, l, o that make up the word hello. Now let's bring back our ASCII table. The first thing we're going to do is to find the first letter, making sure that we remember that there are capital letters in the ASCII table followed by lowercase letters. So the first letter in our word hello is a capital H. So we're going to find the capital H in the characters column of our ASCII table. And there it is. We're now going to look across, and in this case it's looking to the left, to find what the decimal or the ASCII value is. 
and in this case it is the number 72. So we're going to put the number 72 into our table. Now at this point, we could work out what 72 is in binary. We can do that because we hopefully have learnt that already. But we're very lucky that this particular ASCII table shows each of the binary values as well. So we can just look across to the right a little bit and we'll find the binary for 72, which is 01001000. And we'll put that into our table. Make sure you remember that we do have to include that leading zero. We can't leave it out, otherwise that changes the meaning of our binary. Now we're going to look at our next letter. Now this is a lowercase e. So again, we make sure that we look for the lowercase e, not the uppercase. They are different. So here is the lowercase e. We now get its uh, decimal value, its ASCII value, which is a 101. Put that in the table. And again, we can either work out or look at the table for the binary value to put that in as well. And we do our third letter, which is a lowercase l. Let's find the letter, find the ASCII decimal value, put that in our table, and then work out or put in our binary. Now, if we're being smart about this, we're looking right through our word or our original uh, words to see if there are any letters that we've already worked out. So in this case, the next letter happens to be a lowercase l as well. So anywhere that we had a lowercase l, instead of having to do the whole lookup again and match everything up, we always try and find everywhere that we can replace this with. So the next letter is our l, so we can straight away put 108 in and the binary. We don't have to go looking it up again because we've already had that letter worked out. So now let's do our last letter, which is a lowercase o. We'll find that in our table, find its decimal ASCII value, write it into the table, and then work out or write out its binary. So the word hello can be written as the binary listed down the bottom of our screen here. Now let's have a look at how we would go about doing the reverse, how we would decode some binary back into the characters. So let's say we have this binary on our screen. At first glance, we don't know what that is. We're not sure even whether it's technically characters or not. But let's for now assume that we have been told, yes, these are characters. They are things that you can convert or decode using ASCII. We know, or we should know now, that our binary is still read from left to right, just like uh, normal English language writing is. Okay, and we can see that we have one, two, three, four, five bytes of data. So let's now create a table to represent that. So we've got a space for our binary, we, which we already know. We not have a space to put our ASCII values when we look those up and then we can look up what the characters are. So let's work through this. Put in our binary first, because we already know what they are. Now let's take our first byte. Before we can really work this out, let's quickly remind ourselves of what the place values are. So again, they are 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and 128. So that is the eight place values that make up one byte of data. So if we use that information and, and the skills we already have for converting binary back to decimal, we will know that this first byte means we have a 64 and an 8, which of course gives us 72. So let's put the 72 into our first, sorry, our second column here. Now we're not going to go straight away and look up the character, we're just going to work out all our binary first. So we look at our second byte and we work out what the values are. So in this case, it's a 64, a 32, a four, and a one, which gives us 101. So let's put that into the second column. Then the third byte, which is a 64, a 32, an eight, and a four, which gives us a 108. And again, if we're smart, we're noticing that the next bit of binary is exactly the same. So we don't have to do all the math again. We know it's just 108. And then the last one, we work out to be a 64, a 32, an 8, a 4, a 2, and a 1, which gives us 111. So now we have all of our ASCII or decimal values filled into our table. 
Let's bring back our ASCII chart and see if we can work out which characters they are. So we're basically doing the reverse of what we did to encode, but this time we're looking for the ASCII value to find out what the character is. So again, the ASCII values go in order. So we first of all look for the 72 value. So here it is. We can check that the binary that we have is correct. Yep, it's the right number. So that first character is the capital H. And again, remember capitals and lowercase are different. We then find the number 101. Here it is. We can check our binary to make sure we've done everything right so far. And we can see that is a lowercase e. Third one, 108. Check our binary if we like. And it's a lowercase l, so let's write that in. And again, we can see that the next binary and the next decimal ASCII value are the same. So let's just write the L straight in. And then we do our last one, 111. Check our binary if we like, and we can see it's a lowercase o. So we write that in to the table. So we can again see that this particular set of binary was also the word hello. Some of you might've already picked that up earlier, we use the same example just to make it easy, but of course the process would work for anything. So that is how we represent the word hello. Okay, so that is both encoding and decoding of text or characters into and from binary. Thank you very much for watch watching. Hopefully it's made sense. Uh, go back and have a watch again if you need to, or go off and try some encoding and decoding of binary and characters for yourself using ASCII.